Welcome to Entrepreneur's Journey. We'll be discussing the food industry. So Grace is going to be joining us for this interview. Welcome Grace. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Yes. Uh -huh. So who's Grace? Let's start from there. I'm an entrepreneur. I deal with food, yes. but uh, mostly I'm, I'm doing outside catering only. I'm okay. not in a restaurant. I've done restaurants before it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So my core business is to offer outside catering. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was born uh, 39 years ago. I celebrate my 40th birthday in a, in a month or so. Okay. Yeah, Congratulations. So I'm turning 40 where here life begins. Eh? Uh -huh. And uh, I went to boarding school pretty early when I was in standard two. Yeah. Oh, a school in Sierra called uh, Lock Girls. Okay, you are in Luak. Yeah, okay. I was in Luak. Yeah, so uh -huh. I finished uh, Luak. I went to Bunyuri Girls in mm -hmm. Western. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I finished uh, Bunyuri Girls, there's a, uh, my niece who already was in Italy. Mm -hmm. And she was doing uh, food production. And whenever yeah. she would come home, mm -hmm. she really used to make such nice dishes. Mm -hmm. Initially, I really wanted to do mass communication. Yes. I liked uh, seeing those ladies very smart with the screen and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, reading the news. So I really wanted to do mass communication. Okay. But uh, getting into college to do it, I think my marks mm -hmm. didn't, uh, didn't allow. Mm -hmm. However, I also developed a passion for cooking. Because other than my niece, I had a cousin also who could really cook mm -hmm. so such nice food yeah and my mom also being a good cook yes you know we could cook with her during christmas and do so much so i really that's how i went into okay you into, developed the interest I developed the interest yeah i went to school after two years mm -hmm. i was employed uh, i did attachment at a Khan hospital mm -hmm. i went to windsor mm -hmm. and uh you know the passion group okay then uh, i was uh, employed at uh, jacaranda hotel for about seven years okay when i was, uh, it was actually under block hotels yes. so with block hotels i worked at uh, jacaranda hotel i worked at nyali beach at indian ocean beach club mm -hmm. i worked at uh, all their hotels okay yeah then uh, i got bored with the hotel mm -hmm. i decided now to try uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. I, I got employed at SOS Kinderdorf mm -hmm. International. I was uh, employed as a uh, assistant to the head chef. Eventually, I was the head chef. And uh, at SOS is when you, re uh, you know, it was a training center where we only catered for people who had booked for the training. So with that, you know, even with outside catering, it it marries because you see, with outside catering, yeah, it's the order you've been given. You get you don't do you don't just cook blindly like restaurants. You're hoping yeah. that clients are gonna come. What if yeah. the clients will, clients will come? Yeah. So uh, I worked for SOS for nine years. So I left and uh, that's when I went to business full time. That was in 2012. Okay. So, now this is very interesting. For those of you who don't know the places she's talking about, uh, there's a mix of uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, hospital that is very well renowned. Uh, and in different parts of the country, that, and we are talking about Kenya. So all this, uh, what gave her the experience that she's now telling us about. Yeah. Yeah. This is very interesting. I didn't know you had such a wide range of experience. Yes, I'm, I'm experienced. So then uh, I left SOS and uh, it was so premature, it was abrupt. I had started doing my jobs on the side. And uh, now here I was, uh, I actually left to work when I was about eight months pregnant and that was a very difficult period because uh, you know your business you're not giving it your whole because mm -hmm. you're also working but now the job was not there mm -hmm. and I had a family to feed yeah. and a baby coming mm -hmm. so I just hit the road running mm -hmm. uh, I now started doing aggressive marketing and uh, you know word of mouth sales yeah you just need to do the right thing for you to get referrals mm -hmm. because there have been ups and downs you know some clients not getting fully satisfied but in a you know if you rank them between uh, one and ten yes. i still think i'm at nine okay. because the yes. yeah, complaints are not there so I, I i went through my maternity pretty mm -hmm. uh, down because uh, you can't do so much when you're about to deliver but uh, two three months after 
I now gave my business my whole. Okay. I was there with the cooks, I was there to take the food to the client. Yes. To talk to the client, to get uh, to get their feedback one on one, as opposed to then when I was employed that uh, I could get that uh, you know. Yeah, you are like you are getting information from your staff. So yeah, you are so not hands sure. on. Yeah, sure. I was not hands on. I was not yeah. sure whether I was getting the right yeah. feedback. But yeah. now I was able to get the right feedback. I was able to get their concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, then that way you're able to tackle it as the owner. Yeah. You know? Then uh, you also once the staff see you doing that, they mm -hmm. also own the business. Okay. Yeah, so I worked, uh, you know, we've, 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 we've grown, mm -hmm. we've grown thanks to the class that we started off with that mm -hmm. are, uh, and friends and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so grown. Okay, when you started, how many clients did you actually have? When you left SOS and then you were like, okay, I'll have to do this. Yeah. What happened when, uh, when uh, even before I left SOS, yeah. what I started doing is I started off by... Because you know salary is never enough. You, yes. need to, you need to supplement, right? Okay. So I went to, I started uh, training house girls. Okay. So like if you have a house girl, mm -hmm. I would always tell anybody that I've met knew that my name is Grace. Mm -hmm. And I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. And I can cook for you. Or I can, you know, I started marketing myself even when I was still at Jacaranda. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So I started training house girls. So. Mm -hmm. And when will you get the time to do this? I, I. I you know, in hotel industry, we work in shift. Yes. So if I worked in the morning, mm -hmm. morning you report at 6.30 and leave at 3. Yes. If I left at 3, yeah. at 3.34, I would be okay. I'm training. Marketing or training. If I was working in at 3, I would ah, be out at 10, okay. training. So, because training ourselves, I used to take between one and a half hours and two hours. Uh -huh. And when the ladies came back home, mm -hmm. they found such nice food. Okay. And uh, my breakthrough came when I, 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 uh, my, my cousin actually married uh, a lady called Jerry Muga. Mm -hmm. So Jerry Muga likes nice food mm -hmm. and she knew I was a chef. So anytime I went to visit her, she let me go to the kitchen to train her house. Yeah. So all her friends, she's quite connected. Yeah. She's, uh, she has so many friends. So uh, she, she, she told the friends uh -huh. about this relative of hers who is a chef and is doing such mm -hmm. good work. So why do the mouth really work? Really, yeah. So I was at one point so overwhelmed that I could not train her house. Okay. Yeah, I had it's, to stop. It's nice to hear the kind of connection that you're bringing out yeah mm -hmm. uh, of course you have many friends and many people have enjoyed your food I mean I also have enjoyed your food mm -hmm. I think the key thing I'm getting out of this is the kind of connections that you actually keep can really influence your business and mm -hmm. always be marketing yeah. there is no time that you actually stop marketing yeah. you're continually marketing I'm continually marketing uh -huh. so like now Jerry introduced me to a friend and then one of her friends was uh, a board member at new mm -hmm. KCC. Mm -hmm. So she told me, Oh Grace, we you could try KCC, you could go and find out how they because whenever mm -hmm. I go there they they offer us food and I'm sure your food could be better. Yeah. So with that I went to KCC then I realized oh my there's so much that is involved. You mm -hmm. can't just cook food and take. Yeah. Okay. So it was a bit of a setback because I need to register a company I didn't have a name. Yeah. I you know all those government uh, uh, procedures. procedures, yeah, certifications. Yeah. So I took a back seat. I mm -hmm. took a back seat. I continued training house helps, and then now I started also doing birthday parties. I didn't mm -hmm. have any cutlery, so with mm -hmm. the little money that I got from from mm -hmm. the training house helps, I started buying my cutlery. Okay. And once now, I bought my cutlery, let me just get a point over there. So. Actually, when you realized that you couldn't enter the corporate world, what you did is that you went back to the market that did not require too much yeah. procedures yes. and processes for yeah. you to be qualified to do mm -hmm. business in that area. Yeah. So you went back to working with women, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, households, mm -hmm. personal service. Yes. That's what you said. That's exactly what okay. I did. Yeah, because I thought I was not ready. Mm -hmm. I remember I was still working. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I went back I, uh, with the money I got. I started mm -hmm. buying my cutlery. Mm -hmm. Then uh, one of uh, one of the ladies I also used to train her house help mm -hmm. uh, asked me the daughter's birthday is coming soon if I could. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, the numbers were 70. I remember I wasn't married then, but mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I didn't I, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. The same same year, Mugha offered her house. Yeah. Because I lived in a servant's quarter. Yeah. A very tiny one, you know, a 10 by 10. Okay. It's you the bed. Long, it's the long, bed and you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's your bed, your fridge, and your cooker. I had to have, I had to have a fridge and a, a, fridge and a cooker. Cooker. Because being a chef. Eh? Yeah. I want to stock my, when my friends come, I can. Yeah, so I had to do the job. Mm -hmm. really encouraged me. Mm -hmm. We went, uh, got a few warmers. Mm -hmm. It was such old school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the lady was happy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, it was such a road, but it was the breakthrough. That okay. is where now I got so many referrals. Yeah. And I realized, yeah, time has come for me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I registered my company. Mm -hmm. um, How long did it take? For you to do this personal service before now, you, I mean, from the first time that you realized, you know, like you can't do this. The first time you went to KCC and mm -hmm. you are told, hey, you need this, this, mm -hmm. this, to the time you actually were ready. About uh, five years. About five years. Wow. I did, yeah. About five years. Wow. Yeah. The tenacity is amazing. Because, yes. I yeah. mean, it was for many years. entrepreneurs, uh -huh. by the end of the first year, I think but partly was uh, I was mm -hmm. doing something that I, I liked doing, yeah. and I was not looking at it in a business uh, point of view. Yeah. So I was not in a hurry. Because mm -hmm. you, you get. Mm -hmm. uh, I was. I, I think I was comfortable. Okay. Yeah. But uh, there comes a time when you have to do everything right. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. now most of uh, most of my friends were getting into positions, and mm -hmm. for you to be given a job mm -hmm. offer, mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you have to offer catering services, mm -hmm. you have to. It's either or. You have to get the papers right or not. So I, I, I went met a lawyer friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and I registered my company mm -hmm. and got all the paperwork right. Then I started tendering. Okay. Yeah. So I started off with uh, staff meals. Mm -hmm. Okay, staff meals. Uh, uh, Jinadine was mm -hmm. my first client, mm -hmm. just through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. She ate my food somewhere, they have staff meals, mm -hmm. and uh, wondered if I can cater for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and that's how I started. Okay. So we started with Jinadine. With Jinadine, I got crew, okay. Kenya. I did Jinadine, and then after Jinadine, one of uh, Jinadine's uh, very good friend, Anne Jogu, the, mm -hmm. she, she, she was one of the directors of Crew Kenya. Okay, it's an organization that fights for women's rights. Yeah. So I also got into crew. Okay. So I was doing genetic and I was doing crew. While I was still at crew, village market got in. Mm -hmm. They asked me if I could do staff meals. So all how big don't... is village market? Village market we are doing. Village, okay, uh, crew wasn't so big. We were doing about fifty mm -hmm. lunches. Mm -hmm. Village market is big because I'm doing between one. 40 and 150 breakfast, lunch, dinner mm -hmm. every day of our lives. Mm -hmm. And then now we are still at Village Market. I've gotten staff lunch at uh, there's a school in Langata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the business is growing. Okay. We still feel we've not gotten there. Mm -hmm. We still not have exhausted our capacity to mm -hmm. to 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 do the staff meals and all. But we are getting there. But beyond okay. staff meals, mm -hmm. we also have corporate clients. Okay. Uh, EFC is our Big client, mm -hmm. we do their staff meet and not staff meetings. We do their board meetings with their trainings. Mm -hmm. uh, I told you about for KCC, mm -hmm. Kenya Forest. Mm -hmm. uh, even when they have the India parties, okay, the list is endless. So uh, basically, what you're saying is that with uh, so far, with uh, serving both individual clients, yeah, personal service and with your corporate clients, you're basically doing between forty and four thousand. Yeah. Uh, meals. I, uh, we also do weddings, mm -hmm. and also you find when uh, during the campaign periods, politicians are hosting people in their homes and yes. the big crowds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always call upon to do the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what can you say is the one or two or three things? Yeah, let's say three things mm -hmm. that you did that you say moved you to the next level. Which are mm -hmm. the crucial things? The crucial things is uh, honesty, mm -hmm. quality, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you need to be somebody of your word. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because uh, in terms of time. Okay, that's it's still honesty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's honesty. And yeah. then quality must prevail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're just consistent. Okay, in what you do. Okay, consistency and tenacity, I would say. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, 
in this industry, mm -hmm. you have to be on time. Yeah. If you're having a, if you're having a training, mm -hmm. let's say, I also work for Kenya British Association and the official caterer. You find their training mm -hmm. and they tell you the, they have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Or when we're doing video shoots, I do some work for video companies yeah. like Olizon Production. Yeah. If they're breaking at one, it's not two. Mm -hmm. It's not one or five. Yeah. They only have half an hour before they go to the next set. So yeah. timekeeping is key. Mm -hmm. So you have to be honest with the client. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, you, you you need to be also truthful. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you're running late, tell the client I'm running late, mm -hmm. so that the client, as much as he or she will be annoyed, mm -hmm. you're ready to spoke the truth. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of quality, you cannot compromise on quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no okay. quality sells. There's yeah. nobody who would love to eat on uh, some plastic melamine. As opposed to some China. <laughs> so I I try. I try. Yeah. Um, I okay. try to ensure that quality in terms mm -hmm. of food, even in cutlery. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how do you pass on these principles to your team? Yeah. Because I, I mean you you can be a person who really likes high quality, yeah, mm -hmm. and you have, you know, like exquisite ex uh, taste, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. so you're very sensitive uh, in those particular areas. But how do you say this has to be, you know, consistently followed with each and every one of my team members? How do you pass that? Yeah, on? I realized that uh, it's me who owned the business and I was doing it, I was running it like I was running my house. Mm -hmm. And the company was growing. That mm -hmm. meant uh, getting more workers. Yes. And uh, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I went back and uh, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did uh, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. where I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what came out very much was uh, the HR mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. handling human. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult for them to understand that this is where the company is and you want to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. But on and on through meetings, mm -hmm. reassurance, mm -hmm. you know, also making them also own the business. How do you make them own the business? Yeah. When the, at the end of the year you give them bonus, you know, mm -hmm. when they work for longer hours you pay them overtime. Mm -hmm. I'm just treating them like humans mm -hmm. and also making them know that the business is there. Okay. Should the business fail, then we are all under. Okay. It's not only me. So when they see it in that perspective, then they are able to... Really How many employees hard. did you start with? I started with one. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then... Uh, How many do you have now? Right now we are 14. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah right now we are 14. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are still growing. We hope to... Because I have a lot of casuals also. Okay. The 14 are the permanent yes. staff. But the casuals are almost 20. Okay. Yeah. So basically you've provided like 34 jobs. Yeah. Because okay. the casuals mostly we use them on Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday. Okay. When we have so the, the, there's a lot of work over the weekend. We have weddings, we have mm -hmm. graduation parties, companies are having. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, your casuals are consistently the same people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, how which processes and procedures have you put in place? Because uh, one thing is that processes and procedures help to standardize things. Yeah. So people know this is how we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, we we have uh, suppliers or supplier suppliers over the year. Yes. Any supplier who is not able to meet our quality mm -hmm. standards standards we cut off. Yeah. So there's no two way about it. Mm -hmm. So where we source our materials very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have to keep replenishing mm -hmm. lost or stolen or broken mm -hmm. cutlery mm -hmm. so that we still match. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, we also are uh, being adhering to the government uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, at the city council we have. Uh, my workers have gone through the medical tests, mm -hmm. they've come and certified hygiene mm -hmm. and we have the, all the operating licenses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But within the organization, let's say making us a most. Um, and then again, when you look at uh, standards, mm -hmm. let's say for franchises, yeah? Whether you're going, let's say, to a KFC in Nairobi or you're going to a KFC in Mombasa, 
you expect consistently the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how are you doing it in your own? Okay. We have home? we have uh, we have standardized recipes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so which must be followed to the letter. Mm -hmm. So anything that we need to introduce to the menu, mm -hmm. we have we have to go through training with my chefs. Yeah. To tell them this is how we do it. Okay. You see, like let's say our our pork, mm -hmm. how we marinate the pork spirits. Mm -hmm. It's it's constant. consistent. You cannot do it. Yeah. It cannot it cannot be different. Mm -hmm. Not unless mm -hmm. the client tell, the client tells us otherwise. I don't want my pork done like this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But otherwise we have standardized recipes mm -hmm. which we follow to the letter. Okay. Yeah. That also just makes the quality to remain the same. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so w what are you known for uh, in terms of your recipes? My pork. Yo. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really love the okay. way I do it. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it's just sort of as well. Okay. It's my recipe. Okay. I can share it. Okay. Yeah. So but are you are you planning to have that uh, licensed or something? Uh, it's uh, it's work in progress. Okay. It's work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with time of that to, to patent. To patent. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. So how are you passing this on to the next generation, to your children? I mean, th there's some interesting values that you've shared with us. You know, mm -hmm. things like how you've consistently. Uh, followed up on uh, your career, yeah. y your tenacity, I think that is very impressive, mm -hmm. you know, like just being there, like I said before, uh, someone who was thinking of going into uh, catering for organizations and then realizes that, oh, I, I am not really qualified at this point, mm -hmm. many people wouldn't stick on it for five years, yeah. they'd try at so best yeah. for a year and then they stop, yeah, yeah. and then things like honesty, uh, generally, when you're going through stuff, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes people look for shortcuts, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not excusing lies and stuff like that, all I'm saying is that life can be hard, yeah. and people look for excuses, yeah, and justifications, and we see that in business all the time, all the time, and I think the most important for me is that you, what you, how you get your business is tendering, yeah? yeah, and there's a lot of corruption in that process, mm -hmm. yeah, so how do you handle all these things, and then how do you communicate that to the next generation? Um, uh, as I told you, honesty is key, mm -hmm. and uh, at Palisades, where, mm -hmm. that's the name of my company, mm -hmm. Hard work is key, mm. and you see, my children see what I go through every day, mm. and they already they're pretty young, mm -hmm. but they can always tell that, you know, mm. for you to put bread on the table, it calls for hard work. Yes. And How old are they? Uh, my eldest is ten, mm -hmm. Maya, mm -hmm. and then this girl, she's mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. and Joanna. Okay. Yeah, Joanna have three girls, mm -hmm. and Joanna is three years. Okay. Yeah. So you you find the times when the pressure is too much, mm -hmm. they they offer to help. No. Ah, okay. You understand? So they get even involved. Even if it's yeah, yeah, they get involved. Even if of course they're doing nothing about <laughs> it, but the fact that they would offer to peel your potato that they will take like a whole year to to just finish one peeling one potato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I what I keep telling my girls and mm -hmm. uh, my my workers is, I started small. Mm -hmm. I was also employed just the way I've employed. Mm -hmm. So the sky is the limit. Yeah. They don't have to work for me mm -hmm. for like forever. Yeah. You could go and start your own outfit. Mm -hmm. Anybody who can cook can do something on the side. Because if you can make samosas, mm -hmm. I mean you can when you get money at the end of the month, you can buy a kg or half a kg of whiskey, sell samosas to your friends mm -hmm. and your friends will like. Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to tell them that uh, you do not have to be afraid mm -hmm. to you know to make it. Yeah. To have a successful catering farm, yeah, you understand. Yeah. However, if you're still employed, you also need to have show dedication because this is what you're going to transfer to your to your mm -hmm. business. The, it's not bad to be employed because I thank God for my employers. Mm -hmm. I got so much experience. Yeah, and training. And that is the yeah. and training, and that is the reason why I am where I am. Yeah. I took the trainings very carefully. I worked so hard. I learned from other chefs like me. Yes. So I always tell, uh, you know. Uh, young adults mm -hmm. who want to do catering, mm -hmm. I tell them, you cannot just mm -hmm. go to a training school and up you want to start your own your business. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You need to get the experience. Experience yeah. is key. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. even with the experience with mass production. Yes. If uh, you find I have friends who are also doing 
uh, outside catering. Yeah. But they're getting it all, all wrong. wrong. Yeah. Because you find you're an accountant, mm -hmm. you're seeing Grace is making a lot of money outside catering, then now you also want to do it. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> Your overheads are on top of the world. You yeah. cook such bad food. You're yeah. trying to cut corners because you cannot afford chefs. Chefs are quite expensive. Yeah. I opposed to me who I did it in school. Mm -hmm. So I know that. The whole I know the whole concept. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I trained my workers. Okay. You understand? Mm. Yeah. I've trained my workers. Mm -hmm. So they they're doing exactly how I would have done it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means if you are to go into this profession, I mean to, into this business and you're not uh, a chef, yeah. yeah, professional, you'd have to invest in a professional who understands the business. Exactly. Otherwise, I mean, how how do you manage? Yeah. How do you, you manage have to invest. Business? You have to invest in a professional who mm -hmm. understands the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise you get it all wrong. You have mm -hmm. to you have to get consultants to help you. Mm -hmm. You cannot just wake up on a Monday morning and decide you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because food is involving. You mm -hmm. know, by the time you set up a buffet mm -hmm. that uh, it's for a wedding or uh, whatever function you have, mm -hmm. by the time you put all those dishes from the soup to the salad to the main dishes to the mm -hmm. dessert or to the tea and coffee, it mm -hmm. takes so much. Yeah, and, and the first person should get the same quality as, as the, the last, last person. person. And that is what yeah. happens at Quality mm, Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. right. Quality is key and mm -hmm. it's all the way. Okay. Feedback is also very key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's good to, it's because you know you're always learning. Mm -hmm. New recipes come in. Mm -hmm. So it's good to also hear out your client, mm -hmm. find out if your client is happy after mm -hmm. the function, if he was not happy mm -hmm. or she was not happy. Okay. What didn't make her happy, so okay. that you improve on it. So when when do you get your your feedback? Do you get it during the function, as in the comments people make, or do you have a meeting? Let's say if it's a, a corporate organization, do you have a meeting with your clients after? With corporate uh, organizations, mm -hmm. we have uh, feedback forms, uh -huh. whereby the client feels immediately, mm -hmm. uh, or after. Mm -hmm. So we are always. In mm -hmm. consultation with them. Mm -hmm. uh, this one of clients, you know, weddings and all, mm -hmm. it's good to get it immediately because you don't want somebody to call you after two, three days that they had a run So, what I'm getting really is that how you deal with corruption and things like that is quality, honesty, consistency, those are the key things that you need to look at. So that is a driving force. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, your final word what do you want to tell entrepreneurs out there? Uh, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you should go to the field with an open mind. Mm -hmm. Business has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I've had so many downs, mm -hmm. but I thank God for the ups. Mm -hmm. The thing that a business entrepreneur must do, or if you want to get into business, mm -hmm. you must be honest with the client and quality. Mm -hmm. Those are the parts we show. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent in what you do, even if you're stitching this suit. Mm -hmm. It has to be the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Just the way you told me my signature is my samosas and pork. Mm -hmm. My pork, the way we marinate it, is even if it was for a thousand people, mm -hmm. they will say, get the same quality as if they're cooking for five people. How mm -hmm. do we do it? If it's a thousand people, portion the food, mm -hmm. marinate them in different you know, containers. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. You don't do for a thousand people like you're doing for ten people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and cutting on, on the ma on the marinade. On the cutting of the marinade. No. Yeah. It's just like when you are doing weddings, you're catering mm -hmm. for let's say, uh, like today we are doing a catering for about fifteen people. Mm -hmm. Such a small number. Also, what I, I forgot to tell you about uh, uh, this business is, uh, do not underestimate uh, client. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to go to a client and, uh, you know, oh, my name is so and so, I've been given your number by so and so. Could we meet? The first thing I'll ask you, uh, oh, when is your function? Of course, you have to be courteous, they mm -hmm. tell you, and uh, they tell you the function, the number of packs. Oh, and where is the function? You know, mm -hmm. so already so you're judging. Weigh them. <laughs> already you're judging. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Don't do that as an entrepreneur. Yes, yeah. Okay. Because you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. Treat all your customers equally, mm -hmm. give them the respect that they deserve because you do not know who you, you're meeting. Okay. Because uh, part of the reason why we have grown is, you know, word of mouth. Yeah. You that don't have to. You see, clients, you don't also yeah. have to be on billboards. 
what experience do you have? Because you see, the kind of business that we are doing, as, as a, you know, the kind of business that we are doing, mm. especially with food, mm -hmm. it's a personalized mm. kind of business. Mm. It's not like Doom mm -hmm. or uh, what can I say? <laughs> Lux or, or some <laughs> perfume. <laughs> you know, you find already the food there. Yeah. You're going to the client mm -hmm. and you have to offer it here, here mm -hmm. and now. Mm -hmm. So how do you do it? If mm -hmm. you brought bad food, yeah. it's either it's either good or bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you to make it in this, in this industry, one be honest, mm -hmm. two quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And basically, you're creating memories every day. You are creating memories because now you know there's some clients who, even if it's after two years, mm -hmm. you know they take long to host, which mm -hmm. is high, mm -hmm. but after two years they still come looking for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've had such kind of clients, and uh, it's. Uh, it's it's nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Grace. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice talking to you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. it's been a pleasure having Grace on this uh, entrepreneur's journey, and I think we've learned so so much. Yeah, about consistency, about tenacity, being patient, taking your time when you're serving your clients, and really thinking things through. Yeah, there has to be a plan. You cannot start today and expect to be serving four thousand clients tomorrow. Yeah, you have to have a plan on how you're going to grow. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be providing you with her details so that you can contact her should you need some catering services. And then we will be talking to you again about coaching and mentoring. See you soon.